the man who ended white rule in South Africa, F.W. de Klerk, a key figure in the country's transition to democracy, has died at the age of 85. Mr. de Klerk, who served as president for five years, ordered the release of Nelson Mandela from prison, a decision which led eventually to Mr. Mandela's election to the presidency. In a final message, recorded just before his death, Mr. de Klerk repeated an apology for the pain and hurt caused to black and minority South Africans during the apartheid era. As our correspondent Andrew Harding tells us. We did not only admit the wrongness of apartheid. F.W. de Klerk was terminally ill when he recorded this farewell message released today. A man still wrestling with his place in South Africa's tortured history. I, without qualification, apologise for the pain and the hurt and the indignity and the damage that apartheid has done. Back in the 1970s and 80s, South Africa was drifting towards all-out conflict. The security forces of a racist white minority government battling against an increasingly defiant black majority. When F.W. de Klerk came to power in 1989, no one expected this conservative figure to change much. After all, his government ran a nation where black people were treated as inferior, to be kept apart. But within months, de Klerk announced a shocking U-turn. The prohibition of the African National Congress, the Pan-Africanist Congress, the South African Communist Party and a number of subsidiary organisations is being rescinded. <laughs> The ANC, the outlawed liberation party of Nelson Mandela, was unbanned. And soon after that, Mandela himself was released from prison after 27 years. Soon the two men, once bitter enemies, were sharing the Nobel Peace Prize as South Africa inched towards democracy. What nobody can take away from him is, is his foresight. He seized the moment, he showed the courage, and he was... Uh, the figure that um, eventually uh, saw the end of apartheid and Nelson Mandela elected as, pres as president in those heady days of the new rainbow democracy. But the transition was not peaceful. Thousands of black South Africans died during political violence that was, it turned out, deliberately stirred up by white security forces. Still, de Klerk and Mandela kept negotiating, nudging their nation forward. Not that they were ever close. So help me God. And then in 1994, history was made, as Mandela was sworn in as Democratic South Africa's first president. De Klerk retreated backstage. Later, he apologised for his role in apartheid, but insisted he'd never authorised any criminal acts. Within my knowledge and experience, they never included the authorisation of assassination, murder, torture, rape, assault, or the like. Many South Africans found that hard to swallow. And today there is a lukewarm tone to some tributes. He had the courage to step away from the path that his party that he led had embarked upon from 1948. And we will remember him for that. De Klerk was a divisive figure and an unlikely revolutionary, but history will record his key role in bringing freedom to South Africa. So, above all, Hugh, de Klerk was a pragmatist and a very necessary one. He latched on to this role as, as peacemaker, as elder statesman. But the truth is that South Africans never really warmed to him. That's partly because he always seemed to imply that apartheid was never really as bad as evil as people made out, and also because he failed to acknowledge his own responsibility in it. Andrew, many thanks again. Andrew Harding there with the latest thoughts in Johannesburg.